Welcome to my canopy fit out. Um, I have had freezers in there before and I like the system and I just think it's time for an upgrade. So I am actually now going to put a floor in. Let's see how we go. Alright, this is my layout of the floor at the moment. I'm currently in the means of fixing up my lights, my LEDs. They were up in the top, up in there, right along. I've currently got a set out here, right along that door. All controlled by the controller box over there, that, which I have built. Um, I'm going to be taking all of this uh, rubber back carpet out. I will put a complete floor in from one side to the other. Uh, that's the other part of my lights which will go back up into the ceiling. Up into there. I've got to change the connection over there and all in the, cor in the two corners. Floor's been cleaned up. All ready to go. Got one piece in. Very happy how that's turned out. Got a lot more to go. that distance is because over here I'm putting another one up there have a bit in there um, I'm putting in an MSA drop slide on that side right there um, it's so I can mount to this timber here I am putting a centre one down the guts here so we'll see how we go I am going to be cutting the centre out the thickness of the timber only 45 down because it's 90, 90 mil from top to bottom. So I'll be cutting a, a 45 mil from top to bottom by 35 this way um, through the one, two pieces, and probably the one that goes to the back here. Um, I've got another one that's got to go here, timber there, and we'll come around the batteries. And like I said, continue on with the other one there. So the centre piece will tie everything in. I'm putting another piece over the other side on the passenger side for the king's drawers. I'm putting it in here. Um, 
So then I will tie it into these two pieces again. Now over this, over that far side over there, driver's side where the batches is, so I'm putting a tighten fridge slide, so I'm putting another fridge over there. I've already got all the gear. Um, and then I'm going to put, after I've done all that, I'm going to put the 12 mm marine ply on top of all of this and screw it all down. I am going to screw, once I've tapped the 40 mm out of the, there by 35 across, um, I'm going to be putting a screw directly down the centre on each beam. More for strength. Um, so that way when I go to screw the timber down, I can it's going to stiffen it up a lot more. In each cavity, like from where it comes out here, I'm going to be making the, the piece come out so I can actually make that as a, a, a hidey hole. So you can store stuff underneath. So I'm not wasting the floor. So I'm going to do that on the this section here where the Titan fridge uh, the, the not the Titan fridge slides, the, the the drawers are going um, underneath the, the um, MSA drop slide so that way I can just drop the fridge down, take the piece of timber out, get out what I want. Like I might be able to put um, recovery gear under there. It'd be a lot easier than trying to put it underneath the drawers because you can't get it the drawers underneath unless you've got the top slid out. So I'll work it out as I go. Um, that's all I can do at the moment. Work it out as I go. It's one of those projects. Never had a full floor before, so I've just got to work it out. I would prefer to weld it in, but <laughs> I'm not one of those ones that will weld aluminium. Sort of shy of doing that. Uh, I've worked with timber before, it's worked out pretty good in the past. In a steel canopy that I had, still got that one. Um, just having parted with the canopy. Going lighter, trying to make things easier. Uh, we'll continue on with this and see how we go. Alright, yeah, so far what I've done is I've put the extra piece back in the back. Uh, it's not going to move. None of these pieces will move. There's no bolting required with doing it the way I'm doing it. I'm actually notching it so it's going underneath there as you can see. So simple. No bolts required. When your plywood goes on the top of that, it'll lock it all into place. I have actually put a, another piece up here. Um, done the same, all the notching. It's not going to come out. I'm going to notch it out here as well and into that correspond that piece into it that piece is actually notched in as over the far side this is only so I can go around the battery box I don't want to raise the battery box because I can't because I come too close to underneath here anyway I don't want to waste that little bit of space up here um, and go in front of all the, all the power box okay I've got everything pretty much made for the floor for the plyboard to go in all my framing's done. Quite pleased on how it's all worked out. It's all pretty stiff. It's not going anywhere. Not even screwed to the foot to the uh, canopy itself. You no, know, it's it's enough to shake. You know, I don't think it's going to move. Um, MSA drop slide right here measured out pretty good. Um, another fridge over there. Tighten drawers here. Made it so that I can actually screw through these timbers. So, and this one here is going to have a lift out compartment. Once the fridge is down, we can lift that out and access what's underneath. The same for over here, um, that one, and those two at the back as well. So I've started cutting the ply board, which is over here. So I will continue cutting the ply board.
profit. I've had to um, regather my thoughts so I can actually make this two pieces. It won't fit as one. So what I'm going to do with the two pieces, where I've got the drawers coming to here, I'm going to make it so it's two pieces from there so I can put this piece back here in this back corner. Um, I want that piece in so nothing drops down in this back corner. Once I've got the carpet on, no one's going to know that it's going to be two pieces. Because it'll be underneath the set of drawers. Um, I'll still be able to make, make it so that I can have it so that this piece here can actually lift out. Not this whole piece, but I'm going to make it so that it actually is in a sort of a semi-circle so it's a, with a hole in the centre so I can put my finger down with carpet on there and lift it out. So I better get two, measure it all up so I can cut that off so we can fit the sheet in. It wasn't going to fit in whole. Would have been nice but that's the way it's working out. So I'll get to it. matches for the doors there there and up on the back one over there I was able to get the corner cut out for there so nothing falls down into that cavity right into that corner um, I had to split it in half like I've been saying I couldn't fit it all in one sheet because of this back corner um, so what my next project is to, because I'm going to make this part here a lift out, but the sliding drawers come halfway over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure where they finish and then I'll leave it about an inch or so and then do a sort of an oval sort of a section so that um, that part there can be lift out and underneath the MSA fridge slide, it's a bit dark up in that corner, 
I'm going to have that as a lift out as well. So that's my next project. Trying to get that done before I even worry about putting carpet on that. Um, <clears throat> we'll go from that. Then I'll get into doing the other side, the same as what I've done this side, before I even worry about the carpet. I have got the carpet. I may need to go get more. Um, yeah, so we're getting there with it. Currently set the uh, MS8 bridge slide in just to mark it out where the cutout's going to be. Um, I'm going to be taking all of that out there from there right across to the edge here because I've got a board right there. I've marked it all where the boards are. They go to where that line is on both sides. So I'm going to make it, as you can see me line down there where the board is, and then I've got the, I'm going to have this as a cutout where that pencil mark is all the way back so that whole piece lifts out when that's out. So I've also done back here, I've marked that across to there, that'll be a lift out as well. I've sat the drawers in place and there'll be no lift out right here where I'm standing. Um, I've got to now take, because I only put the slide in with two screws to get it all set into place. I'm going to take that out now and start on the other side before I cut these lift outs out. So that way I'll cut all my lift outs out all in one go, then it'll be down to Screwing it down and carpeting. I'll carpet first and screw it down. Okay, that's the progress so far. I've got all the boards all cut out. This one's a lift out. This one's a lift out. This one here's a lift out. It's a fairly big lift out. I had to, underneath this one, I'm going to put an extra center piece in underneath that so it doesn't dish in the gut. I've had to put extra pieces here because this board here that's where it's going to stay and it's got a screw down there so these pieces here are supports all right um this one here is a lift out so i've got, still got plenty of storage underneath so i'm not wasting it i was able to get around and make me a little pocket for my handle on all of them I've left enough room also in all of them to in the gap here so that the carpet can go down the side and underneath on every single lift out. Um, these little back pieces here won't be lifting out. They'll be permanently stationary in there with once I've got them more carpet. But I've left enough room for the carpet to go down the back on the on out there down there and down the side here that's why they're all loose at the moment i've also done all my notching out here for my latches so when the door closes so yeah over the other side of oh, oh, before i get over the other side i've also put a piece down here i've still got to finish that off by putting a bit of a bit of this sort of board that's down inside there that bit of board down there so this doesn't dish down as you can see she's bouncing up and down um, but that's not a, not a problem I can do that at, at any time um, over the other side there just around here this one is where the MSA drop slide is going to be I've made it so that this lifts up as well so it still gives us more storage and then the key drawers here which that won't be a lift out because you can't get underneath it anyway so the next Part of my agenda is to finish off that piece over there where the board's got to go and then she's into the carpeting. Oh joy. But I was able to get it all in so that it all meted up. I was going to try and leave this piece and that as one but then I thought what's the point of doing that? I'm going to make it this piece with that if it was still joined there harder to lift out because the, the, the drawers here will come over a little bit on this one here not by much but I thought it was just as easy to put the handle in the back there so I'm actually lifting out from the back of the door and that way you've only got to push it in put it down it's all done so let's get to and um, 
I'll bring you back when I've started halfway through the carpeting. Carpet all finished. All the boards are all put down, screwed down. I've um, screwed this one down here. It's screwed all the way along so it doesn't pop out. I'm in the process now. I have got the, I'm actually in the process now of putting the drawers in. Um, I'm going to cover the drawers on the outside here, right around the back and around to the side so you can't see here. So it covers all the way down the side. So as I said I was going to do, these are lift outs. Lift out quite easy. That's how much space is in the bottom. It's a fair bit of space. That's on one. They're nice and tight. The big one up the front here. It's a lift out as well. Nice and easy. So you can lift that one out and this other one out at the same time. So that way you've got it all lifted out. And they pop in so easy. When you've got one hand, of course. <laughs> it's always the way. Never got two hands. Here we go. They're just a bit of a bash in. Got to make them tight so they don't fall out when you go along the road. But that's nice and neat. Even the nooks here, they come up pretty good. All right, all my handles come up nice and smick. No, I've got them all stapled in so that if the glue come undone, it's, it's not going to matter because I've stapled it down inside here and underneath. So it's not going to ever come undone That's with it being stapled. I even got this one done. It's a nice, neat, neat one as well, nice and tight. And that's when the, uh, the other fridge slide will come along this edge here and along this edge here. I have got the angle sitting in there at the moment. That won't be sitting in there. That slide, the MSA fridge slide, is actually mounted into the floor. Come around this side, show you. She is actually mounted in. Pull this out. She works pretty good. Gets to there. Down she goes. Quite nicely, I reckon. I had to actually adjust the door so that the handle could go up higher as you can see it's just touching there now the struts on the msa slides not completely compressed that's not going to matter because the fridge door is actually going to clear it anyway so it's only hitting up here on the latch that's fine it can't like the door can go up a bit higher there's a bit of sag in me in me in me um ball joints here um, they were on the canopy when I got it. We may have to replace those in the near future. They are leaking a little bit in the, in the, around the seal, as you can see the bit of oil. Yuckies. <laughs> but anyway, um, no, she's working pretty good. There we go. I just pulled the handle down a little bit more. We can go a bit further with that. That's it there. So that brings that right down so that the MSA drop slide is down. That brings it up so it's a good height. That's a bloody good height. So that's all screwed in. Now, I did do the lift out for this one as well. So you got the little nook in here. It's a bit harder to pull out, but it gives you under, underneath storage as well. So, yeah, pretty damn good, I reckon. It's easy to pull out and put back in. And you just grab the handle, pull it down, push it in, if it'll push in. No, I've got to use two hands here. You've got to unlock it. There we go. We're going in. Going in. That's locked in. Down. And that's it for the MSA fridge slide. As you can see, it's all, all mounted in. I've just got to do the drawers here, which will turn around this way. And they'll be down about here. But further in. Um, but yeah, I'm going to make a cowling that goes right around the whole thing so you can't see under there. So it goes directly from the top here down to the bottom of the, onto the carpet. So that way it covers this, covers that hole all the way along and around the back. So you haven't got that opening at the back. Like if you leave it as it is, there's an opening right there. As you can see, there's an opening. Now, 
I'd rather have that with a cover from there down to there right to the carpet and all the way around because that's going to be pretty close down the side there so that's where that's going to sit um, that's the best I can do at the moment I'm, I'm loving all of this at the moment with all the left outs and June's even loving it it's the best thing we've ever had I was able to get it all down inside here uh, the batteries are just sitting there so the batteries are not going to move. They won't move forward. They won't move back or sideways because the timber around it is actually stopping them from moving. I have got them on a board screwed down through inside the battery case to the board. Um, so they're not going to move in the center here. So they won't move together or apart or anything like that. And it's pretty close over that far side over there where you can't quite see where it's in the dark. So yeah. Pretty happy with that. It's all screwed down. Another fridge slide here, like I was saying. And that'll hold that down from this when, when we lift this up. As you can see, she's sort of a little bit lifting there on this side here. Um, but when the fridge slides there, it'll stop that because it'll screw down in, along here and across. Uh, no, only here. It'll screw down and there. So that'll hold it down. And, uh, yeah, I'll bring it back when I've got everything in there, like the... The fridge that we're going to be putting in there, the other the other fridge that will be here, it'll be, you know, it, we'll have that in there. I'll have the drawers in. Um, I'll have the lights all finished. I haven't got back to doing the lights yet. I got stuck into doing the floor. And um, I'll explain the um, panel up here as well at the same time. So, yeah. See you shortly. All right, finally got all the canopy all finished. I uh, just got to give the you to good old wash up got the lights all done um, they're all controlled by my phone um, we've got a set here on the door I've got another set on the back door which is controlled by the center I'll show you that, that shortly but um, getting down to what I had to do and my putting slides in the drawers in um, I finally got that all finished now this is how I've actually accessed so we can access the part underneath Pull your fridge right out. Pull it right out as far as you possibly can. And I've already filled this little hole. So you can pull that up. I've got all of our fire equipment, like um, what I mean by fire equipment, I'm talking about camp stoves, fire pits, um, wind guards, all that sort of thing in there at the moment. So yeah, that's what I've got in there. Um, so that makes it easier to get out if we need to get to it at any stage. It is a bit hard trying to do it one-handed, but it goes in okay. They've all sort of settled down in being so tight and that sort of thing. Uh, this one here beside us, uh, it's it's one-handed job still. I've filled it up as well. So I've got socket sets under there, like a socket set there, socket set there couple of drills, uh, uh, impact drill, um, stapler, a few other little knickknacks like a, st a stool there, cable ties and that sort of thing. So I can still use those, get to them underneath. Just, it just drops in now, so that's not too bad. Um, under this one here, we've got nothing as far as I remember. Yep, still got nothing, so we've still got vacant vacant spot there. Under this one I've used. All right, I've put all my nut shirts and whatever else in there. So that makes it quick and easy access. Now I did did get around to covering the um, set of drawers. Like as you can see, it's gone right down to the to the floor. Like I was saying, I was going to put a, a shielding around it, which I have done all the way around. As, as you can see, it goes right to the floor. I've done that right around the actual drawers. So you can't see underneath it. There's no lift out underneath that. But just talking about another lift out, there's another one around here, underneath the MSA. All right, I have actually wired everything up. The, the actual fridge that we're using is actually on here. It's not gonna go down on me, there we go. All right. Oh, we're using the Waco CFX Dometic with the dual zone, double lid. 
you can actually swap the lids around on that so you can have it opening this side or the other side, it doesn't matter. You've only got to undo it and change a few things around. So, but with the other one over there, you can just lift either side. Uh, but this is the lift out here. We've already filled it up with all the goodies like boat parts and whatever else we, we need to store in there. Um, I've still got a, a, a storage spot there. I'm going to use that for chairs and that sort of thing. So that probably won't be there, the shake cloth. And I've got the drawers in. Now I'm going to try and use two hands here. There we go. Loving that. Um, in the drawers, I've got the first drawer here is in the recovery gear. Right, recovery gear in there. Um, in this one here, I've got all the power tools, like battery operated power tools. So this top here does slide out, but we'll never ever get to use it. Uh, these are the Titan drawers. So I can still open that if I need to without having to get into the opening the drawer, but I don't think we'll ever want to do that. Just showing you for an example. Locked in, yep. And yeah, that's basically all of that part of it. Like I was saying, I got that finished. And um, totally loving it. So I'll get you down to uh, the actual power box now. Right, I'll just get around to showing how the lights actually work. Um, it's all controlled via an app, like I was saying. So I'll just bring up the app as we speak. Try and find it. There it is there. Right, now I've got that going. All I have to do is come up to here, turn the switches on, one, two, and three. That way, all lights are on. All right, so now it's drawing um, 8.9 amps. That's with the fridges going um, as well. Oh, actually, no, sorry. Uh, fridges are actually running off 240. That's what this cord is. That's how I set it up. It's also got a, 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 an overload switch for the 240 side of it over the far side. I'll show you that shortly. So now, with the lights going, as you can see, they're, they're nice and blue all the way around. All right. Now, the way I've done it is that the inside here, even the back ones, right, and the side ones, the side ones are on separate toggle switches. So I can actually go along, turn them off, um, and just have, say, all that part and that part with an up here and the back door as one. That's the way I've done it. But what I can do with the app, all right, I'll just show you with the app, right, that you can actually change your color. You can actually go into, so it's a, if you want jazzy stuff, you can put it down as music or you can run it as a schedule so it turns on and off. You can turn it on and off right here. All right, I'll just give you an example, all right. I'll turn it off. See now they turn off. I can control them by my phone. That's magic. That's what I like about this. Turn them on just by a tap without actually being out at the canopy if I need to be. So changing the colour will go a green. Alright, so you can change your colour. You can go pure white. See, white. Um, yellow, See, it's going to yellow in the in the app. Um, we'll go back to red. Whee, she's a dark red, all the way around. Now this is the good part. I can actually go to the switch, to the rocker switches up here, turn that one off. That's your doors. I've made it so that your outside one here and this side one for your doors. Center one for center lights. Now as you can see they're still turned on but your doors are turned off. Now this is a cool part. I'm liking this. Even though you've turned it off at the rocker switch you can change your color. Look I'll go uh, pink. Alright we've gone pink. Yeah it's got the little logo tick in the pink. They've gone pink. Now I'll go back to the rocker switch 
turn the other two back on. They stay as red when the last memory was on the phone. I'll show you the other door. See, they're still pink. They're red. But the moment you change, the moment you change the colour on the app, it goes all one colour again. I don't know what it does when you turn them on or off, whether it stays the same. I'll just turn it off. We'll have a quick look as we go. What's it going to do? I'll turn it on. It stays as what they were. So yeah, that's pretty good. But if you, like I was saying, if you change your colour, we'll go back to a standard blue. Standard blue. Right, they've gone to a blue. So yeah, once you change your colour, it goes as that. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm actually liking that. That's a damn good feature, that. I'll just turn them off for now. You can go into your settings for the app and, and all that sort of thing and change it. Like here, you got music, so you can play music, so it jazzes it all up. You can go to your style, you know, everything like that. It's not too bad. Um, and that, yeah, even if you're talking, as you can see, it will change. Changes it here. I've, I've still got it turned off, so this is only an example via the app with me talking and you can go into a schedule so if you want it to repeat or turn on at a certain time certain day it's pretty high tech I reckon so yeah but that's the lights all done and set up um, getting down to the board itself I'll just pull this out so I can get up here it's much easier if I can do it this way Right now, how I control everything here on the main board is by my monitoring system, which is right here, it tells me how much there is in amps, it t tells me how much my percentage is, um, everything, even my voltage, how much I'm drawing, what the watts are being drawn or put in. Um, that's all controlled by a shunt that's in behind the box. I've also got it so I don't have to, like when you, you know how you want to sometimes go to a generator and transfer from 240 to 12 volt? Well, I don't have to disconnect nothing. It's just a matter of one switch. It's the way I've wired it up. I had my old system like the same, but I've just redesigned this whole box. So when I'm down on 240, right, I can leave it on 240. Or I can turn it off. The fridge is just turned off. Now I'll flick that up. That must have been on 12 volt because it was draining. Yeah, now it's on 240. Sorry. Yeah, my mistake. And that's on 240. Now I haven't relabeled it. That's why I don't know which way's which at the moment. So yeah, they've both kicked in. Both fridges have just kicked in. I'll just confirm that by switching one off. Yep. They're both on 240 now. So down is actually 12 volt, up is 240. That makes sense because you're just flicking it down towards your batteries. And I've got a um, 4.8 uh, amp USB there. And on top, television tells me how much the, amps, uh, how much the voltage is there. Um, I'm also using the Red Arc DC to DC D uh, charger, so it's all controlled via Sol. I don't need a Sol control because it's all done via that as well. I do have a King's 150, uh, not 150, a 250 watt solar panel up on the roof. Um, it folds up on this sort of thing. I've put a uh, six-way fuse box, so. I haven't labelled the remains of what's what here yet. Like, I think there's a light there and light there and, and cigarette lighter plugs and that sort of thing. Um, purchased that off eBay. Um, <coughs> got the inverter off Kings. So, it's working well. I can actually run, even though it's only a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter, 
I can run a 2000 watt heat gun directly off that. Not a worries whatsoever. But it doesn't last long when you've only got AGM batteries in here. I'm looking at later on in the year, probably maybe a couple of years, I don't know, um, putting lithium in. So with having all of this here, I don't need to touch anything except for changing the profile in the charging in the DC to DC charger. It's only a matter of opening up this case, putting um, two wires together, and it's all done. Now, I've also done over here, this little switch here, that's so I can turn charging on manually. If I don't want to charge from the alternator, I can actually turn this switch on here so it charges from the battery, the starting battery. So now that's on, it won't charge because we're not drawing anything. All right. But I've also put in an Anson plug here so that way um, I can charge via there by a normal battery charger. So, so yeah, but as you can see, she's up on 100%. I'll just get that to flick back on again. How do I do that? I think you can see the 100%. Give that a flick. Little look. There we go. See, we're on 100%. It is programmed to be 390 amps, so I've only used 2 amps. I have got another cigarette lighter socket here. Um, oh, there's my other 240 way up top. Silly. And I've got a 240 plug up here too, so whenever I'm plugged in via 240 here, I can actually use this here. I forgot about that. I went looking for it today. So, when I've got the 240 plugged in here and I'm running off 12 volt, I can still run there, but the fridges are turned off on 240 here. Sounds complicated. It's not really. It's a matter of how you wire it up in behind. So you can have, you've got to have your mains power running through the circuit breaker up here, right? So that's, a, that's your flick switch, right? Then you've got to run it to your switch. So you want, say you want uh, one 240 power point, so it's on the switch. That's a three-way toggle switch. So, it's a bit complicated to explain, but it's how I've done it many times. You put one wire in the center, it's got three, three prongs down each side of the switch. Um, I'll quickly go grab one, and I'll show you. Alright, this is one of the switches that I've got there. It's just that this has got, um, I might change that label to this one later on. So, I mean, this one's a brand new one, so if that one ever fails up... That is rate. They are rated to 240. I got these from an from um, an electric place here in town many years ago. Um, they're rated for. I'm trying to read it. Yep, 240 volt, 10 amp. So they're quite a capable of doing that uh, for the for the uh, 240 side. But anyway, what I was trying to explain was that if you've got your three prongs here, right, on one side you can run your 12 volt, on the other side you can run your 240. So you wire it up so you've got your, your active in the middle on that one, and your positive for 12 volt on this one. So that's 240 side there, right, this is your 12 volt. So what you do is you run your active to there, right? And then you run the extra active that you've got to go to your power point to there. But when you're going from your from your um, meter up here, your circuit breaker, you wire that directly to another power point. So you go from there down to the switch for one power point. And then another wire from there, because that's a dual, dual breaker, so it's positive, uh, active and neutral brakes. So it, that's how that one works. Um, so that way you can run one from there, one to the end of the switch. But anyway, getting back to the switch, you go, 
go you active on one side in the middle and then you go active from here to your PowerPoint and then on your positive for 12 volt you go here for your positive from your battery or your fuse box first right you that's be your best to go from your fuse box to this and then you go another positive white from that to whatever you want to run to so you've got cigarette lighter plug or something like that that way you don't have to worry about disconnecting 240 or 12 volt because they're a double pole these things so you're not connecting 240 and 12 volt as one you're not thinking well did I disconnect that so just a matter of so at the moment I'm drawing 7.1 amps I can get that yep that's with the two fridges going the lights are still turned on here but I've turned them off with the app so it doesn't draw anything so when I go off with that that goes down to nothing that 0 0.02 is bugger all right so it's not drawing any power then I can go straight to 240 doesn't affect it no fuses no drip jumper switches or anything being switched off now I'm running everything running the display through a 150 amp shunt um, which came with the Renergy display unit um, I could have went to a different brand of one of those but I've actually found them pretty damn good like for what they do and uh, all they are is a display for the price that you pay for they're pretty damn good and easy setup so yeah that's that's how I've set everything up like if I want to change anything in here I don't need to undo any of this box like it's just to undo this box here the whole box uh, to open the door I just got a allen key there and another allen key there but I don't if I want to change anything on this one it's just an allen key there and an allen key down underneath so that that just pops off so I can get inside that they're two separate boxes and this one here just swings around onto a hinge so she's got a hinge around the side here just a piano hinge so yeah um, what you want Bon? hey Bon Bon this is a cat that we're looking after at the moment sorry if I'm rambling on hey Bon so yeah that's that's everything that I can explain about the power box I'm a bit cramped up here as you can see I'm my head's touching the roof <laughs> so I'll just lay back here for a minute what you doing Bon? hey Bon don't show your bum don't show your bum no no Bon what you doing Bon Bon hey Bon meow yeah so that's the canopy um, all finished and buttoned up glad it's all finished myself um, but like I was explaining with the batteries I'll probably get around to changing them to lithium later on when we can afford it so the battery cases can still be pulled out I've only got to take the batteries out and then unscrew them from the piece of timber that they're screwed to and like the whole thing basically in the battery cases I'll just give you a quick look I'll explain it to you instead of giving you a quick look is that I can take these off the top cases take the batteries out and then I can take the whole battery case out all as one they because they're screwed to a piece of timber and then the piece of timber is actually on a piece of rubber they are not screwed to the canopy so they can still flop up and down so up up and down like that that's the only disadvantage so if in an event that we do happen to go over on our side or anything that real bad sort of thing um, yeah they could come up in the air or you know tip sideways but I don't think that'll ever happen go be mad if you get that far over but anyway that's how I've wired everything up um, I'll just hop on out of here for a second and we'll get out of here So that's the canopy all done but anyway um, I'll just show you the solar panel how I've done it up top I'll just close this down for a second 
on your camera angle. Right, what I've done with the solar panel, we've got a little stick up here. Right, been a bit dirty. What I've done with the solar panel is I've made it so it can be lifted up, like so. So I've still got the, the legs on there. Um, I'll just prop it up. Prop it up like so. And then I've got a hooky bar that I'll hook onto that and it stays there. And that's how the solar panel stays up. That's got no solar control on it because you, I've got the DC to DC charger um, for the solar panel. Yeah, the DC to DC charger D. Because um, that does, does take solar. So you, t you do away with your solar c controller and it'll do it all for you. I am planning on getting another panel, another 250 watt panel, it might not be King's, um, it might be a different brand or something of that nature, but I just don't know yet. So that's how the solar panel goes up, the wire runs from the panel, down the side of the panel, along there, along there, and up to the front and down and in. Now how I've connected the front, I'll just leave that up, it'll be fine, I'll bring that down later. What I've done for the front here is I've used some um, connections out of old inverters. And I've got rubber underneath it so it doesn't leak. I've never had that leak at all. Right, and I can connect other solar panels into here. So if I want another solar panel, I don't need to have it fixed like I have that one up there. I can actually plug and some plug straight into there. I won't need a solar control on the solar panel. I can just bypass the solar controller, go straight into those, into those Anderson plugs, right, as long as they're the same wattage as the, that one up there, a 250 watt, I can put two solar panels onto that, and it'll still charge right through onto that. Uh, the one that's actually up top is this middle one, this bottom one is my alternator, it only needs the one because I'm earthed out through my chassis with this bolt here. I've got a wire going from the batteries inside going to that bolt inside on the canopy. And then the, I've earthed the tray to just basically to, um, what would you say, reassure it, you could say, that it's definitely earthed out. So that's what I've done there because the, the main starting battery is earthed out through the chassis. I've done an extra one up the front. Um, it's all ran through another Red Arc isolator switch which is up the front so whenever the main starting battery gets to a certain voltage like uh, I think it's 13.2, 13.6 or something like that it kicks in so yeah and then it, the DC to DC goes from that even though the DC to DC charger does have a cutoff in it I would prefer it this way. I rang Red Arc. They said, yes, put it in. It's a double reassurance. And that's what they've told me to do. So I got advice first before I went ahead and done it. And that's what they recommended. So that's what I've done. Um, so yeah, that's as much as I can show with the canopy build. Um, like I was, I got sick of pulling things up and over top of this lip. This lip here, as you can see, the rubber's a bit buggered. We've got to get new rubber. That's from actually dragging things up, and you can see the scratch marks in the aluminium there. No, not real happy about that, but it's the way the cookies crumble. Um, no, quite quite liking this at the moment. So, so sorry for rambling on. I'm going to end it off there. And um, so, yeah, if you like me, canopy build, ask some questions. And I may be able to answer them. Um, got any questions about the uh, power box? Put a comment down in the comments section. Comment below. Um, so yeah, I'll end it off there everyone. And um, don't forget to like, subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Forgot to mention, if I do blow a fuse, um, a little red light comes on in there too so if I, I do blow one of the 
lights or a USB or a cigarette lighter plug or the fridge a light comes on saying which one's actually blown I've actually got around to actually label them all I've labeled everything in there um, I'll just give you a quick demo of what I mean by if a fuse blows or something like that I'll just take a fuse out so if I've got a blown fuse say on the fridges right so the bottom one here's the fridge a light should come on a red light it's fairly well tied in there at least I know it's not going to vibrate out no only if it's on 12 volt okay that's all, all on 12 volt now as soon as I plug this back in the fuse box plug the fuse back in I can barely see what I'm doing here getting a bit dark and late in the day Right, the light goes out. Fridges come back on. And yeah. So that's what happens if I blow a fuse. Damn good idea. At least you're not chasing which fuse is blown and which one's not. You can say, right, well that's one that's blown, I can actually replace it. Um so yeah, but this is how I was explaining before where I could actually run a battery charger so I can turn the battery charger on and it's connected through the Anson plug and it's actually charging I, I thought I'll put it back on 240 and um, let it charge up so that the batteries are fully charged all the time so she's just about charged and um, yeah I just thought I'd show you that I got around I think like I said I finished labeling got all the lights all the lights which ones is what like the roof lights which is up here which is the center um, PSD passenger side door DSD driver side door so that's the easiest way and that's all classes lights so yeah um, just a short little one at the end of the video thank you for watching